Hello, and welcome to another episode of DAX in 10. In this episode, we're going to be looking at what is probably the most useful, powerful, and the most important function in DAX, and that's the calculate function. Now, realistically, in a 10 minute video, I'm only going to be able to scratch the surface of what the calculate function can do. But as with all the episodes in this series, uh, the aim is to help get you started, and then I'll provide links to more detailed videos and articles in the show's notes. Before we get started, let's look at this slide again. Um, we've, we've covered the slide in previous episodes in this series and it's just explaining what the filter context is uh, and as we've seen the filter context is basically uh, any filters that are influencing a, a data model for a particular evaluation. Um, your initial filter context can come from a variety of uh, ways, uh, maybe a pivot table or slices that you may have on your dashboard and they're important in regards to the calculate function because basically what the calculate function does is it allows you to change an initial filter context by adding, removing, or, or modifying elements of it. Okay, so let's start by looking at the syntax for the calculate function. Uh, the function takes two sets of arguments, the first being the expression that you want to evaluate. Uh, this can be an expression or an existing measure, and it must evaluate to return a result. So uh, a value, not a table, and it's therefore usually an aggregation function such as sum, min, max, etc. You then have a set of optional arguments, which are a comma-separated list of Boolean or table expressions that specify the filters you want to use that will modify the initial filter context, which is applied to the expression you're evaluating. Uh, there's some restrictions on the Boolean expressions that you use as arguments. Uh, they cannot reference a measure, they cannot use a nested calculate function, and they cannot use any function that scans a table or returns a table, including aggregation functions. Uh, but a Boolean expression can use any function that looks up a single value or that calculates a scalar value. Okay, so we're uh, just starting off here with a very simple uh, dashboard in Power BI. Uh, I've got a table here that shows sales amount by country and continent. I've got a card here that shows me total sales amount based on what I'm selecting with a couple of slices as well. Uh, so for example, if I click on Asia, I can see my total sales amount is 1.79 billion. And in the table, that's then just being filtered down and showing me the countries for Asia. Uh, I get a total at the bottom there of 1.79 billion. Uh, but I can override this, this in initial filter context uh, by using the calculate function. So for example, for each row in this table, if I want to then show how much the total world sales are, uh, I can do that by creating a new measure. So new measure. Let's call that total world sales. Uh, we use the calculate function here and we pass in sum of sales amount as our expression. And then how we want to override that uh, filter context. So in this case, I want to ignore all filters on the geography table. Now, I could have actually passed in two separate um, filter options here uh, and I could have done all uh, uh, continent name and all region country name um, which would give me the same result but it, it's easier to just override all filters uh, on the, re uh, the geography table to start with. And if I bring that onto my table here and that gives me the result that I want, 8.34 billion as total world sales. And let's just create another new measure, and this time perhaps uh, do total continent sales. And then you can see um, where it be becomes useful to be able to override filters on just a, a particular field name, for example. So new measure. And I'll call this one total continent, name, uh, continent sales. calculate function again uh, so same expression as before sum of sales amount and then this time we're going to uh, ignore all filters on the country name in the geography table 
So that's region country name. And let's drag that onto the table now. And we can see that's that's giving me the result I want as well. So perhaps if we just look at Asia, yeah, we see that's 1.79 billion. Uh, Europe, 1.62 billion. And North America, uh, 4.9 billion. Uh, now, you might be thinking, well, why do I need these? Well, these are useful if we want to see how much um, sales amount for a particular country is as a percentage total of world sales and as a percentage total of uh, continental sales. So we can now create another couple of measures to show that. So let's do a percentage uh, world sales. And we're introducing another new function here. This is a divide function. Basically what that does is allowed you to do a division and then in cases where you have a divide by zero, you can specify uh, an alternate result. So let's divide some sales amount. Uh, we're doing here, we're doing world sales. So we're going to divide that by our total world sales measure that we created just now using the calculate function. And in cases where we get a divide by zero, I just want it to be zero. Let's drag that onto our table here. And I just need to format that as a percentage. So we'll go to the uh, modeling tab and create a uh, select format of percentage there. And then let's create another new measure this time for continental percentage of continental sales. Let's call that continent sales. And spell. Use that divide function again. Some sales amount. Divide that by our total continent sales. And again, zero in cases where we get a divide by zero. Uh, format that as a percentage. And then we can bring that onto our table as well. And in fact, we now no longer need these total world sales on there because we know they're working fine. And so there you see, and very quickly, you can see how uh, often you're going to be using the calculate function because that, that's uh, a fairly simple thing, and uh, quite a common uh, thing that you're going to want to show in, in dashboards. Uh, and I, I, I really can't emphasize how often and how, how important the, the calculate function is if you're or really serious about using DAX and, and Power BI. Um, I'm just going to show you a more uh, advanced example of the calculate function and this is one I made earlier and this is to show uh, total sales per day uh, let's get, that, get that back right there we go it's just calculating that now uh, it's obviously got to do a, a fair bit more work with this one um, actually I've just noticed there's a, a slight mistake on that and that uh, Sales today is formatted as pounds, it needs to be dollars there. For the currency. That's, uh, there we go. Okay, so what this is doing, it's saying for, for on each row of uh, our sales table, uh, calculate the sales amount, but only include uh, sales for days that are up to and including the current date. So we'll just take a look at what the results of that are. You see here, there we go. See here, so it's day one, first of the first 2011, we sold $6 million worth. And there's our sales today at $6 million. Next day we sold $6.2 million and our running total there is now $12.3 million and so on as it goes down the table. Um, so what it's saying here is for each row, um, add up all the sales amounts here, but only for days that are including the current date that it's over. So, so for example, on the 10th of the 1st, I want all the sales 
uh, add up the sales amount for all of these sales. So that's anything from the 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, 6th, back to the 1st. And then obviously as you go into the next row, it's, it's moving on by one day. Uh, so that just gives you a flavor of, of what potential you can do with Khan and it just gets more and more complicated as you go. I mean, you can really use it to, to do some very advanced calculations. Uh, obviously only in a 10 minute video, I can only scratch the surface, but hopefully that's uh, given you food for thought, got, got you started. And as always, I'll put in the show notes some links to more advanced videos and, and articles. Okay, so that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed learning DAX with DAX in 10. If you did, then please give me a big thumbs up uh, and please feel free to leave a comment. If you uh, want to find out when the next episode of DAX in 10 is available or if you want to support the channel, then please consider subscribing. Until the next time, thanks for watching.